Welcome to understanding and using transferable letter of credit. In this module we will learn What is a transferable letter of credit? How does a transferable letter of credit work? And some common questions related to the transfer of a letter of credit. In a normal letter of credit, or also known as credit operation, we usually find two parties, the issuing bank and the beneficiary. Under this arrangement, only the stated beneficiary can make presentation under the credit as the undertaking of the issuing bank runs to the beneficiary only. Now imagine, Rax BLC is a trading business from Singapore. They supply garments to different parts of the world. They do not have any manufacturing factories of their own. However, they have more than 100 manufacturers come suppliers worldwide. Rax BLC receives orders in the form of LC, and the suppliers of Rax also want LC for order confirmation. However, the suppliers of Rax cannot present documents under the LCS received by Rax because Rax is the beneficiary of the LC, not the supplier of the Rax. Thus our normal LC does not perfectly fit this situation as we have three parties here. Issuing bank, beneficiary, which is Rax BLC, and the ultimate supplier. To address this problem, Rax have several options. One, issue a back-to-back -back LC in favor of the ultimate beneficiary, but it will cost extra commission and credit line. Two, assign proceeds of original LC in favor of the ultimate supplier but it doesn't guarantee payment to the supplier. 3. Transfer the original LC in favor of the ultimate supplier. What is a transferable LC? Simply speaking, a transferable LC is a type of LC where the first beneficiary which is Rax may transfer the drawing right to a second beneficiary which is the supplier of Rax. To become transferable, RELC must have two unique characteristics. 1. It must be named as transferable and 2. There must be a bank authorized to transfer the LC the transferring bank to a second beneficiary. Now consider the following case. Singapore Bank receives a letter of credit from an issuing bank in Germany in favor of RAX via SWIFT MT700 subject to UCPDC600 for a value of Euro 1000.00. The advising bank Singapore Bank found that the LC is marked as irrevocable transferable and Singapore Bank is authorized to transfer the LC. It's now a good time to look into UCPDC600 Article 38, which is the applicable rule here. We will start with sub-article 38b which says, Transferable credit means a credit that specially states it is transferable. A transferable credit may be made available in whole or in part to another beneficiary second beneficiary at the request of the beneficiary first beneficiary. In our case, the LC says irrevocable transferable which meets this requirement. The sub-article further reads transferring bank means a nominated bank that transfers the credit or, in a credit available with any bank, a bank that is specially authorized by the issuing bank to transfer and that transfers the credit. An issuing bank may be the transferring bank. Please note the term specially authorized by the issuing bank to transfer. In our case, Singapore Bank is specifically authorized by the issuing bank. So now we know what makes a normal LC to a transferable one. Rax approached the Singapore bank to transfer 90% of the LC value but 100% of the goods. How? Let's consider total LC value equal sign 1000 euro. Per unit cost of goods equal sign 10 euro. Total unit of goods equal sign 100 PCs. Rax asked to transfer the LC as it is except for the price. They ask to reduce the price to 9 euro. The result will be like this.
It is also possible to transfer one LC to more than one second beneficiaries. However, there is a precondition set by sub-article 38D for this. A credit may be transferred in part to or more than one second beneficiary provided partial drawing or shipments are allowed. Thus, if partial shipment is not allowed, then there cannot be two second beneficiaries. Singapore Bank charges SGD 100 to transfer LC. UCP says that if a bank is unable to recover charges from the party said to, it's the LC applicant who will pay. Can RAX take this advantage and save 100 SGD? The answer is no, because sub-article 39 century says, unless otherwise agreed at the time of transfer, all charges such as commissions, fees, costs or expenses incurred in respect of a transfer must be paid by the first beneficiary. After meeting all the formalities, the Singapore bank finally executed the transfer. They send a MT700 swift message to a bank in Bangladesh and ask that bank to advise the LC to the producer. Why 720? While Swift MT700 is designed to send LC from the issuing bank to the advising bank, MT720 is specifically used to advise a transferred letter of credit to the second beneficiary. On receive the LC, the Bangladeshi producer shipped the goods as per the LC and submitted all documents to Singapore Bank. Singapore Bank found the presented document complying and paid the second beneficiary Euro 9000. Later Singapore Bank asked Cracks to present its own invoice for a substitution. In fact, RAC's invoice value can never exceed the total LC value. As UCP 600 subarticle 38H says, the first beneficiary has the right to substitute its own invoice and draft, if any for those of a second beneficiary for an amount not in excess of that stipulated in the credit, and upon such substitution, the first beneficiary can draw under the credit for the difference, if any, between its invoice and the invoice of a second beneficiary. If the documents presented by RAX complies with LC terms, Singapore Bank will pay RAX Euro 1,100,000. Later, Singapore Bank forwarded the document to the issuing bank and claimed reimbursement as per credit instructions. What will happen if RAX fails to substitute documents? Or, is there any expiry date within which RAX has to present its own documents? Well, there is a provision for this in UCP 600 subarticle 38I if the first beneficiary is to present its own invoice and draft, if any but fails to do so on first demand, or if the invoices presented by the first beneficiary creates discrepancies that did not exist in the presentation made by the second beneficiary and the first beneficiary fails to correct them on first demand, the transferring bank has the right to present the documents as received from the second beneficiary to the issuing bank without further responsibility to the first beneficiary. That means if RAX fails to present its own invoice, Singapore Bank may forward the ultimate supplier's documents to issuing bank and there is no specific expiry date for document substitution.